My friends, the Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Many of Jesus' disciples who were listening said, This saying is hard. Who can accept it? Since Jesus knew that his disciples were murmuring about this, he said to them, Does this shock you? What if you were to see the Son of Man ascending to where he was before? It is the Spirit that gives life, while the flesh is of no avail. The words I have spoken to you are spirit and life, but there are some of you who do not believe. Jesus knew from the beginning the ones who would not believe and the one who would betray him, and he said, For this reason I have told you that no one can come to me unless it is granted him by my Father. As a result of this, many of his disciples returned to their former way of life and no longer accompanied him. Jesus then said to the twelve, Do you also want to leave? Simon Peter answered him, Master, to whom shall we go? You have the words of eternal life. We have come to believe and are convinced that you are the Holy One of God. The Gospel of the Lord. Before I uh, begin, last uh, Friday, not this past Friday, but the week ago, I had the privilege to represent St. Gregory's Parish at Sister Maria Christie's first vows, her profession of her first vows. As you all know, Sister Maria is from St. Gregory's, a longtime parishioner, taught in our school, and has chosen the religious life. And I want to say that I was there with Father Joe, myself, and a few other parishioners and her family, and it was tremendous. You could see the joy in her heart that she was in the right place, that her call to religious life indeed was the gift of the Holy Spirit. And so as she professed her first vows that day, as she received from the bishop her black habit, as she received the crucifix to wear and also the gift of the rosary. You could see in her joy and her appearance the excitement there. And it was truly an honor to be there. And I ask you to continue to pray for her vocation as she continues that journey. Her next step will be to renew her vows over the next years. She has six years to make that final commitment. She can do it probably in the space of next three years, in three years from today, to make her finals. But she will need our prayers and support as she does that. And so I just wanted to let you know where she's, what she is, and also to say to you, thank you from her for your prayers as she continues this vocation, this call of God in her life. Indeed, a true blessing. Loyalties. Where do our loyalties lie? When you think about it, there are so many different things in our lives that we can be loyal to. Some of us might be loyal to a particular sports team, to a particular friend, a particular school, a particular church. And the list can go on and on and on. What makes up our loyalties. It's a choice we all make because we have to choose. And so as we gather here today, we believe in Jesus Christ as the living bread came, from, came down from heaven. 
we choose to gather here today, this time, at this altar, to proclaim the greatness of that life-giving gift. And so it requires a leap of faith. It requires a complete trust in our God that we choose to give our allegiance and our loyalties to him as we gather in prayer, as we share in the sacraments, as we minister to one another, as Christ has called us. A choice, a loyalty, a decision that we all make in our lives. And that is where the scripture is all about today. Because the prophet jo- Joseph, Joshua puts this challenge to his people. He tells them, whom shall we serve? The God who we have, or is it the God that we make up? The God we make up, or the God who has made us? And so like the people of old, we too need to choose and each of us has to decide. The people of old chose to follow the Lord, their God, the one who had made them. Who do we choose in our life as we gather here before the altar of God? Do we believe in Jesus the Christ, he who is the words of eternal life for all of us? In St. John's Gospel today, we're given a choice. In it, Peter declares that Jesus is the one who has the message of eternal life. But just what kind of eternal life is to be found in Jesus Christ? What exactly is he promising to all of us? Because when we think about the idea of eternal life, we tend sometimes to fumble for words and images we come up with wind and clouds, harps and angels and halos and pearly gates. But what does that all do for us? We think we need to go back to the gospel. Because when Jesus spoke about eternal life, he always said is. Eternal life is. He said it, will, he never said it will be. Because eternal life always is. It's here and it's now. And so the eternal life that comes to us is coming to us through Jesus Christ. Through him, with him, and in him. Now, today, this very moment, as we gather here in prayer. Think about these little examples. I'm sure you may remember at one time or another when you might have joined... Weight Watchers. How did that go for you? The choices you had to make. Or think about maybe you're a student in college, and after the first or second day of that particular new class, you ran from the class to the administration office, and you filled out the slip to drop out of that class. It was a close one because it wasn't what we chose, what we wanted, what we needed. Or think about maybe you started a Bible study here in the parish and after a week or two, you disappeared. You stopped coming. Why? We made a choice, a decision in all of those experiences. I'm sure all of us have at one time or another started something and then decided to quit because maybe we were scared, it was a little bit too difficult, we didn't want to pay, pay the cost of what it would entail with the time and all the other things that play into that. Because I think that's part of the human experience in our lives because it's sometimes we like to retreat because we find it too much. We're surprised by the demands that it makes, the level of difficulty. Yes, we start out with all the great good intentions, but then we decide, well, it's not the right time, or we're incapable, we can't do it, and on and on and on. And so Jesus, when we think about it, attracted 
quite a few people in the Gospels that we hear proclaim for us week after week. They wanted to be in his presence. They wanted to follow him wherever he went. But when he told them what was really entailed and what was expected of them, we hear what happens. Some of them give up. Some of them simply return to their former ways of life. They felt what Christ asked, the cost, was just simply too great for them. Stewardship calls us all to become more mature disciples that respond to Christ's call, no matter what the cost is. Because if we're going to take that commitment seriously, we have to work hard on becoming what we are called to be in our baptism. On some days, it might seem easier to do. On others, more difficult. But yet, we need to make the commitment. It's just like those simple examples. Some days, it's easier to lose the weight. Sometimes, it's not. Sometimes, the class fits. Sometimes, it doesn't. But no matter what, we need to make a decision, a choice, a willingness to endure the cost of whatever it is because the rewards will be great. And when you think about it, Jesus will be the tutor who will be there with each of us on the journey, helping us, guiding us, as we make the decisions in all of our lives. The pattern of what calls us here, the Eucharist, the gift of body broken, blood poured out, that is what we are all about to remember what Jesus has done for each of us at the Last Supper. Because what did he say? Take this, eat of it, drink of the cup. And it's in doing that that we share eternal life. Because eternal life is centered on body broken, blood poured out for all of us. Unless you eat of my body, Jesus said, you will not have life in you. Because what happens to the bread and the wine and the Eucharist is the story of your life, of my life. It's your body and my body that is broken and poured out because we become one with Christ when we say, yes, Lord, I believe every time we come, every time we proclaim, every time we share. And so, yes, we must break our bodies. We must pour out our blood for the gift of Jesus Christ. And it's in doing that then that we become the body of Christ alive, lived, celebrated, and shared among one another. And so just to break the bread or to pour out the wine, that's not the Eucharist because anybody could break it and pour it. What it becomes is what makes it Eucharist. Those words of consecration, the gift of our action, the words that we proclaim, all of that brings to us the Eucharist, the gift of eternal life that we're called to share, to believe, to celebrate, and to commit to every day. It doesn't have to be dramatic. It doesn't have to be with a blare of trumpets. All we need to do is give of ourselves as Christ has given for each of us. You and I, we need to translate it into our lives. We need to translate it into our words and actions. It's basically a call to give, to share, to love, to forgive at every level of our lives. It's not easy. It's difficult at times. There are risks. But when we do it, the grace of God is with us. Our loyalty, the choices we make, our commitment to the church are vital and necessary if we are to grow is the body of Christ. Hopefully you and I will say, yes, Lord, here I am, use me. And Jesus posed the question to Peter and the 12, do you also want to leave? And Peter responded, Master, to whom will we go? You have the words of eternal life. You and I, we come here because we believe we are convinced that Jesus Christ is the Holy One of God. As believers, 
as the body of Christ, we do not say we want to leave, nor, no, Lord, we want to share. And so the choice is ours. Do we believe? Do we choose? Are we loyal? Do we follow? May we all say, yes, Lord, use me as we share eternal life each day.